This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. And welcome back. Over the last few years, it seems like everyone is talking about low T or low testosterone. Recently, we heard it might not be as safe as we once thought. Today, we have Dr. Justin Puckett from Complete Family Medicine here this morning to break it down for us. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. So first of all, tell us a little bit about testosterone and what causes low T in, in a person's body. Well, testosterone is the primary male sex hormone. It's, it's made in the testicles, mm -hmm. and uh, it does a variety of things to help... Uh, uh, control the way that we function. So primarily um, with uh, bone mass, it, uh, it really f affects our bone density so that we have nice and strong bones. It also uh, d directs where fat can be stored. And so uh, we know that people who have a lot of truncal obesity or extra fat around their belly may have low testosterone. Uh, it's also responsible for building muscle strength and mass, although interestingly enough, when we replace testosterone, it doesn't really make us any stronger, but it may increase the mass. Um, it also drives red blood cell production, of course, sex drive, and even sperm production. Hmm. So now what does it happen with age? What does the levels happen with age? Uh, about After age 30, we lose about 1% of our testosterone per year as a normal phenomenon. So it's, it's, it's natural for our testosterone levels to decrease over time. Um, but for some reason, uh, some people's uh, uh, testicles, just men's testicles, cause them to, uh, to produce much less than that 1%. And those are the people who might benefit from, from considering treatment. Now let's talk about like naturally declining testosterone levels. Does that cause any sign of symptoms of aging or anything like that? It really doesn't cause any problems with aging. There, there, it, uh, it's more of a subjective the way that you feel. Uh, there's a, there was a group of monks in the Far East that many years ago that part of their initiation process involved castration. And so we've been able to study that, that culture versus the other men in that culture. And they actually lived uh, the same length of time. And maybe because they lived a lower stress lifestyle, they actually lived a little bit longer. So we don't think of testosterone as being necessary for uh, living longer, mm -hmm. but we do think about testosterone as maybe providing uh, some of those subjective uh, 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 improvement and some of those subjective complaints. Now I know that there's been like some some therapies out there to help with testosterone. Now is that is that okay? Do you recommend there, that? Yeah, there's a variety of uh, treatments out there. There's pellets, there's gels, there's patches, uh, uh, shots. A variety of ways that t testosterone can be can be supplemented, and so I really suggest to to patients that if that that it's something that because we don't really know where uh, what the risk might be at this point, mm -hmm. that unless those symptoms are uh, really significant, that it's not something we just want to be testing on everybody and treating on everybody. It's mm -hmm. a it's a two billion dollar industry just testosterone replacement therapies alone last year. Wow. So yeah, so it's a big it's it's a it, it, it's a big deal. So those companies certainly have an initiative to try to tell right. all men that they need to have, that in order to be manly, they need to get that testosterone replaced. Now let's talk about the risk factors with that therapy for normal aging. Like what happens? Yeah. So when we, when we supplement testosterone, we, we think of a couple things. First, we know that testosterone uh, can contribute to sleep apnea. Um, it can also cause your body to make too many of those red blood cells uh, although that's a pretty rare thing we see with the testosterone replacement. More commonly, we see acne or other skin reactions, um, and it can and cause the prostate to actually grow. And if there's a, it, testosterone replacement doesn't cause prostate cancer, but in instances where you may have a prostate cancer that is sensitive to testosterone, it could cause it to maybe grow a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. Um, and it can cause enlarged breasts and even limit sperm production and cause testicular shrinkage. So tell us more about this study that has scared a lot of people about testosterone. Yeah, so the, what happened is the VA uh, looked at, a, uh, at about 6,000 patients who were heart patients, so they had known heart problems. And what they did was they, they followed those people for several years, and about 2,000 of them were receiving testosterone replacement. When they went back and looked at the data, they found that of those 2,000 people, that they had, were more likely to have um, heart attacks. And so, so the, the retrospective look, it, it, we can't say with any certainty that testosterone caused them to have more heart attacks. Right. But it does raise some questions and reminds us that testosterone is a fairly understudied medication. And so we, we're, many more studies are going to be done. The FDA is looking into this. I'm not um, 
uh, crying uh, that the sky is falling and everybody should stop their testosterone replacement, but it does just bring back light that despite what we sometimes see, uh, that uh, it's this panacea of wonderfulness, uh, we, we really, it's a, it's a medication, it's mm -hmm. a powerful medication, mm -hmm. and it's something that shouldn't be taken too lightly. So really quickly, what is your advice to patients out there that do have low levels of testosterone? Well, I think that they need to weigh these risks and benefits um, very carefully. They mm -hmm. need to have a strong discussion with their health care provider. Um, if supplementing, we're, we should never take the levels of testosterone super therapeutic to high levels. I mean, I've seen 90-year-old men who naturally have testosterones at eight or 900, and I've seen 35-year-old men who have testosterones of 150. And so we, want, we don't want to take that person w through the roof. We just want to increase it back above three or 400. Um, and, uh, and then the biggest thing that I tell my patients is, is if you start testosterone therapy and you hope it's going to fix all these things and you've done therapy for a couple of months and really nothing's better, then there's no real reason to continue it. And we ought to stop, probably look at stopping it. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, what we'll do is we'll post everything on our website at heartlandconnection.com. We'll also link up Dr. Puckett's information with Complete Family Medicine. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Thank you. Great. And we'll be right back.